Carolyn Doobie here. What's the play for today? Well, today I'm doing a paint pouring. I'm going to fill this little cup here with paint and I'm going to bring the rainbow out on a canvas. I'm going to start out by filling a cup with layers of color. Now, what's in those squirt bottles? Well, that's simply acrylic paint and Floetrol. And you can find Floetrol at hardware stores, you can order it online, that kind of thing. Now, if you're curious how to mix up paint, how much to put in, that kind of stuff, I've got all of that information for you in a free paint pouring guide, and I'll have the link down below so you can just get that sent to your email. This is a two ounce cup, and once I've got it completely full, then it's time to go to the exciting part of paint pouring. There are two things that I find absolutely exciting about this. The first one you're seeing here, this is when the rainbow comes flowing out of that cup. When that paint starts to move around, shift and change, cells start to appear, it's like it's magic happening. It's mesmerizing, and if you think the colors are vibrant and interesting on camera, it's even more intense in person. If you've ever done a paint pour, you know what I mean about how all those fine lines and details, the intricacies of a paint pour that you can see when that paint flows out of that cup. The other reason paint pouring is so exciting to me is the freedom, because there's really no wrong way to do this. I could leave it just the way it is and it would be a great paint pouring. And I can also do more to it if I want. I have complete and total freedom. So that means when you're pouring, you can do it in the way that feels best to you. And for me, I'm not a huge fan of white space, so I want to cover up all those little edges. So what I'm going to do is simply tip the canvas and try and get the paint to kind of squeeze over to those edges. As I'm doing this, some of the paint is going to go all the way over the edge, all the way over the side, and it's going to start dripping. Now, that's not going to create a mess for me because you can see that box that's under there. That's going to catch all the drips. It's not going to go all over the place. The box is going to catch it. And all that color that gets caught in the box, that will become a paint skin. So none of this ever has to be wasted. I mean, how could we waste something this beautiful as the rainbow? Now, if you're new to paint pouring, if you're kind of curious about it, you probably have a lot of questions about the stuff that I've been showing you in this video. Like, how do you set up your space? How did you create that box and the drips? And how do you make it so the paint skin comes off the bottom? And why do you use this or why do you use that? Well, those kind of questions are all answered in detail in that free paint pouring guide. There isn't enough time here in this video to cover it all. And that guide is, I think it's over 20 pages in there of information for you. It's also got checklists and it talks about the different supplies, the different kinds of pouring mediums, a lot of great information in there and everything you need to get started doing paint pouring. Notice that little bit of white up in the top left corner on the canvas? Yep, that's a part that I don't want to be there when this is dry. So it's been a few minutes, but everything here is still completely and totally wet because, well, I mean, this stuff takes like what overnight to dry. So waiting five or 10 minutes is no big deal. And I'm coming in and I'm just covering up any of the white space, the white canvas that's showing either on the top or on the sides, because I want the entire thing covered in with color. Once that part is done, then I leave it for anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes to just drip right here because, well, I want to catch all those drips in the box. Once it's done dripping, then I'll move it over to a drying rack. And by drying rack, what I mean are a couple of Dixie cups glued onto a piece of cardboard. I just need some way to keep it elevated while it's drying. Your supplies don't have to be fancy. They just have to work. So once it was completely dry, what did it look like? Well, here it is. This is the canvas completely and totally dry. You can get a look at all those details that are in there. Now, did everything stay exactly the way it was where we just left off in the video? Nope, some things do shift while it dries. And that's what happened down here. Got a little bit of change happening here and there was maybe a little bit of up there too. Well, thanks so much for joining me for today's play. If you've been enjoying this video, I so appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up. And if you like this video and want to see more like it, hit the subscribe button. That way you'll know as soon as I've got a new video out. And of course, if you'd like to see everything that I'm up to, all the kinds of play that I like to do, you can find it all over on the website at acolorfuljourney.com. Thanks so much for letting me be a part of your colorful journey.